from D. James Kennedy Ministries. This is Kennedy Classics. Welcome to Kennedy Classics. Hello, I'm Frank Wright. Welcome to Kennedy Classics, which is a viewer-supported outreach. I want to invite you to visit our ministry website where you'll find an outstanding and useful collection of digital, audio, video, and print resources. It's all available at djkm.org. In Paul's epistle to the Romans, we find a telling description of those who ignored the testimony about God that is visible to all through the light of creation. The apostle writes, For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God, nor give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. In this narrative, we see revealed two of our most important duties before God, to honor him and to give thanks. For those who would not, this passage repeats a fearful phrase. Three times it says, God gave them up. Gave them up to what? He gave them up to lustful impurity. He gave them up to dishonorable passions. He gave them up to a debased mind. All because they would not honor him and would not give thanks. So here is the question for us. Are we thankful to God who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all? Here is Dr. D. James Kennedy with his message, Why Be Thankful? I have something that I want to ask you to do, and then I have something very important to say to you. First of all, what I want you to do, each one of you to do, right now is to close your eyes. Some of you are still looking at me. <laughs> Everybody has his eyes closed tightly. Now keep them closed, and I want to tell you something very important. You're cheating. All right, those of you that haven't already opened your eyes, you may do so now. And I want to say to you that if you <clears throat> were Helen Keller, that's exactly what this entire service would have been like. Darkness and silence. No beautiful songs from the choir. No lovely view of the sanctuary and the flowers and greenery. No sounds of the organ. No message. Nothing but silence and blackness. When did you last thank God for the ability to hear and the ability to see? Be ye thankful, is our text today. William Paley, <clears throat> a famous apologist for the Christian faith of some many years ago, said that perhaps the chief reason for our insensibility to the goodness of our Creator is the vast extensiveness of his bounty. And I think there's a great deal of truth in that. What shall I wear today? How many times have we all heard that comment? What shall I fix for dinner tonight? Is there anyone who hasn't heard that? Well, let me tell you about some people in Ethiopia. They didn't have to worry about what to fix for dinner that night or any night because, you see, they had 
nine beans a day. Nine beans a day, and that was all, perhaps some polluted water to go with it, and that was to feed a family of four. So you had your bean in the morning and your bean at night. There was no worry about what to fix for dinner. What to put on? Well, there was no problem there. If you were the lady or the daughter, you had one raggedy, old, filthy dress that you wore every day of every month of the year. Shoes to match? No, there were no shoes at all. Accessories? No problem. They didn't even know what the word means. And yet amazing to tell, it is reported that some of them are exceedingly thankful for what they have. One of the chief reasons for our insensibility to the goodness of our Creator is the vast extensiveness of His bounty. It occurs to me, gentlemen, that many of us sitting here today may be wearing a tie which costs more than the total annual income of a breadwinner for a family in a number of nations in the world. There are numerous countries where the annual income for a family is $20 a year. I'm happy that I was able to get some of my ties imported silk from Korea. I bought them in Seoul at Woolworths, imported them myself, a dollar and a half. <laughs> Makes me feel a little less guilty. The vast extensiveness of his bounty. I think if we're going to realize the importance of thankfulness and thanksgiving, we need to remember that in the first chapter of the Book of Romans, which is the most extensive statement of the Christian gospel message, after declaring that God is the creator of all things and such is known by the creation, that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. And then as they began that great decline into the miry pit of sin, they state, Paul states, neither were they thankful. And that was the beginning of the slippery slope that led to hell. Neither were they thankful. You know, the, the man that is really thankful for his wife doesn't commit adultery. The person who's thankful for what he has doesn't steal what he has not. If we're really thankful, it will truly transform our lives. I made some discovery in, in preparing this, in uh, looking up the word for thankful or be ye thankful or neither were they thankful. The word is a, a familiar one. Uh, we have a, an English word that comes right from eucharisteo, we get the word Eucharist, which is one of the names for the Lord's Supper, which means uh, to be thankful. But that comes from two parts, EU, which means good, and charis, which means grace, good grace. And a definition given by one of the authorities is this, quote, the divine influence upon the heart and its reflection in the life. So that thankfulness is a reflection of the good grace of God to us in so very many ways. Any one of us could have been born in Ethiopia, could have been born like 
Helen Keller, who, by the way, in her writings demonstrates amazing gratitude and thankfulness for what she does have. Now, too often, I think, because we don't have everything that we would like and because things are not just perfect, we can't see the ointment for the fly, and we are not grateful. And I, years ago, told you about a lesson that I learned. When we first came here, we built a home, which was the first home that we had ever built, and uh, it was a very palatial mansion, cost $19,000, 19300 I think, to be exact. And, uh, but to us, it was our first home together, and it was absolutely perfect. At least until one day when I was sitting out on the patio on my day off, I looked up at the overhang, and there was a crack all the way across the overhang. Alas and alack, my perfect house had just become imperfect. <clears throat> and uh, I called, uh, I don't know who I called now, but somebody, and it got the, the, pa the crack patched and painted. And then, lo and behold, it cracked again, and the four-inch paint strip that went across the white under overhang turned yellow. So now I had a crack with a yellow stripe around it. My world was getting increasingly less perfect. And finally, it, it dawned on me one day that my home had turned in to one gigantic crack with a yellow stripe with a tiny house around it. And all I could see was the crack, and I had become very very ungrateful. And finally, I was awakened to my uh, condition and confessed it and repented of it and thanked the Lord for the part for all of the house, including the crack, which had taught me a very, very important lesson. And that is that we need to be grateful even in an imperfect world. And many people are, are going to be grateful just as soon as everything is perfect, just as soon as they can get rid of all of the problems, all of the aches and pains, and just as soon as you can get your spouse straightened out so that he or she is perfect, then you're really going to be grateful. Well, friend, you're never going to be grateful. How grateful are we the rest of the year? Uh, you turn on the news, and what do you hear? 70% chance of rain. Oh! But stop and think, my friend. Suppose the rains stopped. Eventually, all of the grain and crops would turn brown, wither, droop, and dry. The streams would swarm with vermin and then dry up altogether, as would eventually the lakes, the grass, and the trees, and the bushes eventually would all die. And soon, Florida would be Ethiopia, and our houses would be habitations of skulls. Think about it. The next time you start to grumble about the rain. How true it is that oftentimes we who have been blessed the most are the least thankful. I think of a woman who was elderly, bedridden, ill, and poor. And a lady visited her in her little tiny one-room apartment, and she came in and Everything was so run down and pitiful. She sat on the edge of the, of the bed, and the woman uh, smiled up at her when she saw her, and she said, oh, I'm so happy to see you. I was just lying here giving thanks to God. And the woman looked around at this miserably 
scant, sparse room. It had walls with cracks in them that you could see outside. And she said to her, how can you possibly be thankful for anything? Look at this place. Well, you can see outside right through the cracks. She said, that's exactly what I was doing. I was thanking God for the sunshine that I could see coming through the cracks in the walls. Wow, does that rebuke my ingratitude. Thankfulness, of course, is simply the outward expression of an inward attitude of gratitude. And that certainly is a reflection of the goodness and grace and mercy of God. I think about Archie Bunker or The Simpsons, both of which I understand, though I didn't see it, had episodes when Archie Bunker said to his family that I guess the wife was offering thanks. Why are you thanking God? I'm the one that worked and put the food on the table. And uh, in The Simpsons, I understand a similar thing was said, uh, something to the effect, uh, God, uh, we worked, we earned the money, we bought the food, we paid for it, so thanks for nothing. And I think about that text in Romans, which says, neither were they thankful, but their hearts, their minds became vain, foolish, empty. Their hearts were darkened and uh, they descended into, into gross kinds of sin. You know, behind the bread is the baker. Behind the baker is the miller. Behind the miller is the farmer. Behind the farmer is the sun and the rain. And behind the sun and the rain is the hand of God. But the blind, hardened hearts of the ungodly men that wrote the dialogue for those programs can see nothing beyond their own foolish selves. And so they became vain and conceited and darkened and blinded in their ingratitude. And that's why that over and over again in the Bible, ingratitude is condemned as a sin and gratitude and thankfulness is commanded as a very important virtue. You know, over these 30 some years, I've had many people come in to me for counseling and some of them have said to me, and now, Pastor, I don't want to shock you, but, ah, I want to tell you, there is nothing anybody could say to me that would shock me. I have heard it all many times over, and they have told me about their egregious and heinous sins that they have committed. But I'll tell you, there is, there is one, one sin, I think, that would shock me. If someone ever came into me and said, Pastor, I don't want to shock you, but, but I have committed this horrible, heinous, terrible, ghastly, wicked sin. I have been ungrateful. Now that would shock me. I have never once heard any person confess that sin to me. Have you? And yet the Bible condemns it as a seminal sin, one that leads down into the very depths of depravity. And so God commands us to be thankful. And if we are the recipients of his grace, then our eyes should be open to see the goodness of his hand all around us. I was thinking this morning, I was taking a hot shower and I couldn't help but think of a, of a national, and I don't remember how long ago it was I heard about this fellow, but he was a, a national from someplace like New Guinea or Arian Jaya. And he had been led to Christ and he had been brought to this country. He had gone to school and college and seminary. He was going back to New Guinea or Arian Jaya down there to be a, a minister not exactly a missionary because he was a national. He was from there. 
And he said to someone before he left to go back, he said, there, there's one thing I'm going to miss, and that is never again for the rest of my life will I ever have a hot shower again. And I was thanking God this morning for the hot, the warm shower that I was taking. How many times do we thank God for the hot water, for the air conditioning, for the bed, the mattress to sleep on in a world where so many people have none of those things. Many have not even a roof over their heads. And I thought as I read a letter from uh, Glenn and Connie Thompson, Thompson, two of our people who up in their 60s have gone to Irian Jaya, which is part of the island of known better as New Guinea, one of the most primitive places in the world. And I thought uh, here as they were talking about the huge spiders that were there in the houses, uh, the snakes, and uh, all kinds of various uh, creatures that crawled around uh, in and out of the houses that I, I thought how often are we ungrateful for the fact that our homes contain none of those things. We're thankful for what we have, perhaps. Are we thankful for what we don't have? Oh my goodness, we've got a chameleon in our house. It could be an 18-foot boa constrictor. <laughs> and it could be hanging for a, from a beam right over your bed when you first see it. And how we need to express our gratitude to one another as well. Though ultimately our gratitude is to God, God does use the farmer, the miller, the baker, <clears throat> and the grocer to provide us with the bread. And we should be grateful to those people as well. And how often do I, and no doubt many of you, fail to express our thankfulness to the people who bless our lives in so many ways. And gratitude acknowledges our dependence upon one another. We're all dependent upon so many people. And I thank God for all of the many people who serve Christ so diligently in this church. And I pray that God will give me a greater attitude of gratitude. He'll open my eyes that they not, might not be darkened, that I might see the wonder of God's goodness everywhere about us. I think just about the wonder of the hands that God has given to us. And I have seen people who've lost a hand or lost the use of an arm, and I thought what a tremendous loss that is. This hand, which can hold a pen or pencil or write with a typewriter or a computer or throw a football or climb a rock or do a million other tasks. I wonder how often we're grateful for the wonder of the human hand which any animal on this planet would be delighted to have and which most people never once thank God for. And these incredible eyes of ours, which can catch in an instant a whole mountain range or a sunset. And I hope that, that as we're reminded each year of the importance of thankfulness, that God will enable us to be thankful, to be thankful for our families and to express it. You know, there are many people that desperately need to hear that. I think of a woman who had lost her husband and life had lost all of its meaning for her, and she didn't see any reason to, to live anymore. And someone said to her one day, you know, I am thankful to God for you. It transformed her life. Somebody appreciates me. Somebody needs me. My life has a meaning and a purpose again. Thanksgiving can not only be a tonic which can indeed bring new life and joy to our own hearts, it can change the lives of those that we express it to as well. My daughter gave me a big hug this morning and said to me, I'm thankful to God for you. And you know, it's amazing what those words will do.
for an old dad's heart and for anybody's heart as well. And if you haven't been expressing the gratitude that you ought to be, I hope that out of that attitude of gratitude, which is a reflection of the grace and goodness of God, that if we are going to demonstrate ourselves to be the children of God, of the infinitely gracious God, then we cannot be thankless and Christian at the same time. Be ye thankful. Certainly something that those of us who know Christ should be thankful for is the free gift of eternal life. I hope you'll take some time this week to thank God for His incredible undeserved mercy and grace. And today, if you don't know about the gift of eternal life that Jesus Christ came to give freely to all those who would place their trust in Him, don't miss this opportunity. Today you can begin a brand new life free from your sin and shame and the heartache that often comes with it. Jesus Christ Himself said, Behold, I make all things new. The Bible also tells us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So today, if you'd like to experience a brand new life with Jesus Christ as your closest friend, pray with me right now saying, Lord Jesus Christ, I know that I'm a sinner and that I justly deserve your disfavor. And yet, I want to know you as my friend as well as my Savior and my Lord. Please forgive me of my sins, cleanse me, and make me brand new. I place my trust in you and thank you for dying on the cross to purchase a place for me in heaven so that I may live forever with you. In your name I pray, amen. If you just prayed that prayer, we have a special gift for you. It's Beginning Again, the book written by Dr. Kennedy for new believers. It will help you grow in your newfound faith as you read from the Gospel of John and learn how to pray and study God's Word. It's yours when you write to our address or call our toll-free number. Be sure to ask for your copy of Beginning Again. God bless you as you do, and Happy Thanksgiving. This Thanksgiving week, we're thankful for viewers like you who desire to hear God's Word and let it transform your life for His glory. If this is a message you'd appreciate seeing again, or sharing with those for whom you are thankful, we'll send you a DVD or CD of this treasured message as our thanks for your generous donation of any amount toward the ongoing work of this ministry. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11164, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free 888-332-3069. Or go online to djkm.org. I'm Frank Wright. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Kennedy Classics. We'll see you next time. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.